Hey everybody, just a quick update. It's been a while, but I'd tell you what I've been doing between my school and running a business and all that stuff. So, wargaming wise, this is what I've been doing. I've been playing a lot of a game called Fleet Admiral. It's a new set of rules, came out in uh, February, I think. Brand new, and it is fantastic. I mean, I think for the first time I could jump right into a naval miniatures game uh, right away. Uh, and start using pretty much most of the rules. So it's a really good game. It's uh, easy to play, uh, and I highly recommend it. I'll put a link down in the bottom of this description on where to find this set of rules and all the goodies associated with the website on it by the author. Uh, and there's a Yahoo group and all that stuff, free uh, ship uh, information, cards, uh, scenarios, all kinds of things. covers everything from... Uh, uh, Russo-Japanese and prior to that all the way up through World War One, and Volume 2 goes into World War Two, and a possible Volume 3 goes into shore bombardments and landings and that sort of thing. But here's some of my stuff. Here's a ton of World War One ships I have. I've had these for years and I gotta get to painting them. What can I say? I mounted these on uh, balsa wood. I'll have to remount them. I think they're 12400. I don't remember. I think I bought these as 12400 scale. Uh, maybe some of you people out there could uh, help me with that and identify this. This is the Queen Elizabeth. And it's about two inches long. So, yeah. There you go. Some nice ships, really. Little tiny ones. This is the V1 class German ship. Really nice. And I just bought like a, I don't know, maybe 60 ships for the Russo-Japanese War. And this time I went for one three thousandth scale. So they're a little smaller. I'm waiting for those. So I got some painting to do. Hopefully put up some good battle reports on uh, these rules. Or naval gaming in general. Here's a battle I got going now. I've just been tinkering around with trying out the game. <clears throat> yeah, I'm using counters. Uh, looks horrible. I know. But it works. They came from the Fear God and Dreadnought boxed game I got years ago. I got the previous edition uh, right now. It's full of counters, which is highly useful. Uh, it's basically a miniatures game. Uh, gives you an idea. Here's some American ships. There's the Wyoming, as you can see. Very useful. Uh, but that's what I've been tinkering with until I get my miniatures painted. The old Fear God and Dreadnought box set. <clears throat> yeah. Measuring thing, I'm, you can print that out. And the website's got the rules. You can download them as a PDF or get them as a binder edition. It's not too expensive. Uh, really good. Um, they're not heavy on the brain. I know a lot of games and naval games like Fear God and Dreadnought, for instance, very heavy with the rules, uh, which is intentional. You know, it's it's the kind of uh, game it is. I mean, naval gamers tend to be a sort of different lot compared to other miniatures gamers. They like the details of their games. Uh, and this game has all that, but it's written and designed in a way that's very streamlined, and a lot of the calculations... Most of them, in fact, are just built into the, the rules themselves, and it does the work for you. So you can speed through a game in no time. I really enjoy that aspect of it. Very happy. Uh, so yeah, that's what I've been doing. And if you get a chance, check them out. And I will have some battle reports and things of that nature for the rules. Naval gaming in general. Uh, the HMS Champion, I think. The King George the Fifth, the royal ship. Look at that baby. They're a little dusty. So yeah, yeah. And I think these are one twenty four hundred. Maybe somebody can help me. Uh, here's the Nottingham. Again, that's about a little over an inch in size, inch and a half. Uh, okay, folks. That's what I've been doing. I just wanted to show off what I've been up to between 
my other activities <coughs> and uh, show off some of the rules I've been fiddling around with. And I should have some more battle group uh, rules up too. I love that set of rules uh, for World War II miniatures gaming. Uh, it's full of history. Great army lists. Very uh, fast moving set of rules. Plays extremely well. And you don't need a ton of miniatures, and you will not get the wall-to-wall -wall tank syndrome of Flames of War or other games. Uh, the density between miniatures and terrain on the tabletop is, is perfect, in my opinion. Uh, mostly realistic, I would say. I guess that's it. All right, folks, that's what I've been up to. You take care and uh, enjoy your day, and updates coming soon. Okay, bye-bye.